Hi, so in this video, we are going to be solving a past paper question of coordinate geometry. And this is from AS level, May, June 2018, paper one, variant two. Now, coordinate geometry conceptually is not a very difficult topic. You know, we just have four or five main concepts uh, around which the question will always revolve. But sometimes when everything comes together, the question can get complex. And uh, this, by the way, I would say is not extremely difficult question but yeah it is challenging to some extent so which is why i've chosen this question and i'm going to solve it in as much detail as possible i'm going to try and elaborate all the concepts that i'm using all the formulas that i'm using so that you have a solid understanding of how to solve a question like this so let's get started it says points a and b have coordinates h h for h plus 6 comma 5 h respectively the equation of the perpendicular bisectors that's very important perpendicular bisector of a b is 3x plus 2y equals to k find the values of the constants h and k so notice how it says values that means we're likely to end up with more than one answer anyway so let's dive straight into it so we're going to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector a b the way that we normally do okay and that is the first thing we're going to do we're going to find out the gradient of a b so this right here, 5h, is basically y2, and 4h plus 6 is x2, which means we can consider h and h as x1, y1. So we do y2 minus y1, that means 5h minus h, and divided by x2 minus x1, which means 4h plus 6 minus h. So what do we end up with? We end up with 4h upon 3h plus 6. Yeah, and there's nothing really that we can simplify here, so we'll just leave it as it is. Now remember, this is what? This is the gradient of a, b. Okay, so what that basically means is that when I uh, take the negative reciprocal of it, that's how I'm going to get the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. So let me just illustrate this for you guys real quick. So if this is what the line that joins AB looks like, the perpendicular bisector of A and B is going to look something like this. Okay, so it's going to be passing through the midpoint. All right, that's the what the word bisect means and perpendicular means it's going to pass at 90 degrees. So this is the gradient of AB. We have this now. Now let's see what the gradient of perpendicular bisector is going to be. So first we'll multiply it to the minus sign and then we'll, uh, we'll reciprocate it. So we have minus 3H plus 6 upon 4H. Okay. All right. Now that we have this sorted out, let's see what do we have to do next. Now we already know what the equation of the perpendicular bisector is. 3x plus 2y equals 2k. So we don't have the constant, but we do have the coefficients of x and y. The good thing about that is we can use these coefficients of x and y to figure out what the actual gradient of the perpendicular bisector is going to be. So in order to do that, I'm going to make uh, y the subject. So we have minus 3x plus k, and y is equals to minus 3 upon 2 times x plus k upon 2. So that means the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is minus 3 upon 2, which basically means that that is what minus 3h plus 6 upon 4h is equal to. So I'm going to equate the two. So we have minus 3h plus 6 bracket close upon 4h is equals to minus 3 upon 2. So luckily we have minus on both sides, so we can just cancel them out. Now if we cross multiply, we should be able to find out the value of h. Now before I cross multiply, let's simplify this. So we have two ones are and two twos are. Now the h is still going to be there, okay? So don't, uh, so make sure not to cancel that out. Now if you cross multiply, you're looking at 3h plus 6 is equals to 3 times 2h, which is going to be 6h. So 6 is equals to 3h, that's uh, because 6h minus 3h is 3h. If I write this nicely, so 3h is equals to 6, which means h is equals to 2. Now remember, we just have what? We just have the value of x and we just have the value of h. We still have to find out the value of k. Now, how is this going to help us? Let's see. Considering that I have h, that means that I basically know what a, b look like, right? I know that a, which was previously h comma h, is now basically 2 comma 2, okay? And b which was basically 4h plus 6 comma 5h is now basically 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 6 is 14, yep, and 5 times 2 is 10. So that means now I know what the actual coordinates of a and b look like. Now we have the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a, b. So how can we put all this together and find out what k is? So here's how this works. Well, how this works is that you know that the equation of the perpendicular bisector, this line that I've, that I've drawn in red here, is 3x plus 2y equals to k. So if you look at the number of unknowns that we have in this equation, we have x and y and k. So if you have three unknowns and you want the value of any one unknown, that means you need to know the value of the 
other two, which you can plug into this equation and make the other unknown the subject. So I, that basically means if I can somehow find a point that's lying on the perpendicular bisector, then I can work out what the value of K is. And we know from prior knowledge that perpendicular bisector is basically a line that passes through the midpoint. So that means I can find out the midpoint of A and B, plug it in in this equation and find out the value of K. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find out the midpoint of A and B. So in order to do that, we'll do two plus 14 upon two comma two plus 10 upon two. So two plus 14 is 16, 16 upon two is eight. 2 plus 10 is 12, 12 point 2 is 6, so now we have the midpoint of A and B, that's 8 comma 6, now the equation is 3x plus 2y equals to k, that means I can plug in 8 in place of x, and I can plug in 6 in place of um, y equals to k, let's write this nicely, 24 plus 12 equals to k, so 24 plus 12 is 36, and that's what k is equals to, let's write this nicely, 30k is equals to 36. And there you go, we now have the value of h, also the value of k. So notice how when everything just sort of comes together, so you have to kind of backtrack and see what perpendicular bisector basically, what, what do we have to do when you when we're dealing with perpendicular bisector, you know, you need to remember all the properties related to perpendicular bisector, and then it just sort of all comes together nicely given that you know your previous concepts well. Anyway, so this is one question that I wanted to solve in this video and I'll see you guys in the next video with hopefully another question and I'm gonna try and find some more challenging questions related to, related to coordinate geometry. If you have any questions that you want me to solve, any specific questions that you can always let me know in the comment section or you can reach out to me on Instagram. So yeah, that's all for this video. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care, bye-bye.